Welcome back. So starting out the second half of the week, this is the uh, little wiring harness here for the glow plugs for the engine. And I've put some ring terminals on the end there where the regular Audi connector was. And this is the um, relay that I'm going to use because I was having a bit of trouble starting the engine on those couple of cold mornings this week. And so I needed to get this hooked up. So this is what it looks like. And yeah, just again, prototype, just put it where it works and everything can reach because that harness isn't all that long. So this was a good spot to put the uh, relay up the top there. And then the, you know, there's three glow plugs on one side and three on the other side. So I got those all hooked up. And then as you can see to the relay, and then I've got uh, some heavier gauge uh, wires there running down to where the starter motor connection is there. And then a hook up for the ECU. All right, it's a little, uh, little windy today, a little breezy. So I'm, I'm going to test a couple of things. I've just hooked up the glow plugs on the engine. I was having trouble starting it on the colder morning, so now that those are connected and the ECU is driving that, it started up right away, although it's not that uh, cold right now because it's after lunch already. Uh, but anyway, it is working, and I'll have, probably have to dial in the parameters on that a little bit more um, just to make sure that it's not sort of overworking it. Um, anyway, so that's done, and then the other thing I've done is I've adjusted um, my volumes on the radio, so hopefully it doesn't over-modulate on the audio anymore. So we'll see how this ends up sounding. And then uh, the other thing is, um, I'm okay, going to try... What your tell is on the 45, so left down for an I'm going to try um, seeing... Uh, how uh, things look with my airspeed indicator. I've just disconnected the pitot static or the static line in the where it goes through the bulkhead and out to the back. I've just disconnected it, so it's just feeding in through the nose compartment right now. And I'm trying to get scheduled with the AMP so it can come out and do the pitot static check for me. Check traffic one two hotel is clear for the five check. Cherokee traffic, experimental two Tango Delta crossing uh, runway 23 midfield Cherokee. And Cherokee County traffic, experimental two Tango Delta taking runway 23 for high speed taxi, Cherokee County. Alright, this is just going to be a slower test just to see how the airspeed looks now. Yeah, that definitely looks better now. See, the altimeter is not changing at all either. So, that's good. But yeah, I'm going to have to get a, a proper position for that static port. I didn't have one on there initially because it was going to, uh, or the one where I put it originally needed to be outside the pressure vessel, so I had to put it behind. Putting it in front, I thought I'd have more problems, but apparently I've got some behind as well. So. It'll be interesting to see how the airspeed compares now to the uh, GPS speed. And not to interrupt, but I think you'll notice that it was about six knots lower than the right. GPS speed was. So I still need yeah, to do some uh, stuff on that thing and get that dialed in. Traffic experimental two Tango Delta taking runway five high speed taxi Cherokee. I'll see how quick I can get to 70 knots, maybe. Wind is still gusting around. I don't think I'm going to push it that hard today. See that windsock down there gusting crosswind.
Cherokee Traffic Experimental 2 Tango Delta, runway 23, high speed taxi Cherokee. And before we get started on this run, just notice there on the graph there in the bottom left corner how straight up and down that um, speed chart is there showing that the acceleration is really consistent. Because of the uh, gusty winds and also the fact that I had a tailwind here, I didn't take it that fast. And you'll also notice that the ground speed and the speed reported by the camera and the indicated airspeed all have uh, varying degrees of differences, so still some work to be done to figure out what's what with that. I might set up over here and do a another three minute run and see what I can get. Alright, I'm going to try sort of like a three minute run and we'll see how that goes. I think I'm probably just going to go... I think I'll, I'll go to full power and then I'll sort of back off a little bit after what, what would be probably 40 seconds, which would be, you know, taking off. Cherokee County traffic, Bonanza 1-0, now to off the six miles to the west inbound for landing Cherokee. Temperature is going to be, or the oil temp is going to be the limiting factor here, 230 already. AGT is stable around about 1400. I have to back it off a little bit now. Cherokee County traffic, Bonanza 1-0, yeah, no one back it off, let cool down, that was too much for it. Keep it up a little bit just to uh, keep some air moving over everything. And coolant's coming down again. Well, it's definitely got enough for full power for takeoff. And then if there's cooling air coming in, it should Cherokee keep the oil. traffic, Bonanza 1-0, another walk off the left base on my fire check. If there's air flowing through the intake there, it should keep the oil and coolant temperatures down. And then 
everything would be okay. Still have to back off just watching the EGTs there, but. Cherokee County traffic, we're going to have one to normal to final full stop, point five, Cherokee. Didn't take that much to bring the uh, EGTs down to 1400 and have them stabilise, which I think is quite reasonable there. Uh, there's just the coolant here, just not enough air coming in to keep the uh, radiator and ultimately the oil temp down. And I don't want to push it too hard. I don't have to on doing stuff like this. So the last time I did this, the engine wasn't tuned up, so here's the difference. There's the run there, so if I zoom in on that, you can see uh, what was going on. So went to full power um, fairly quickly there and maintain that for what would have been you know take off an initial climb out so basically the first 40 seconds or so and you can see the uh, oil and coolant uh, temperatures there starting to sort of ramp up and also the air temps on the intake because there's really no air moving through the radiator and the intercooler uh, the egt's went up to about 1600 there and then when i backed off um, and, and then you can see the fuel flow there 23.3 so it's putting out quite a lot of horsepower at that point um, now that it's tuned and then after I backed off the fuel flow went down to 15 gallons an hour and you can see the EGTs there totally stabilized so I'd be able to run at that power setting without any problem and that should still be about 300 horsepower pushing 15 gallons an hour uh, but as you can see the limiting factor there is the the air coming in through the intake because the oil temps and the coolant temps just continue to rise there just because it's just not getting enough airflow. And obviously when it's flying that you know will be much much better um, with moving air and it's generally better also too just you know when I'm doing um, tests up the runway. But overall it was a good test um, so I know kind of what's going on and how much you know I can push the engine there for takeoff and climb out. Uh, anyway um, there'll be more testing uh, next week it's going to be raining pretty much all weekend although i might get some testing in on sunday afternoon so and today uh, friday it was pretty much raining all day anyway that's the update for second half of this week thanks again for watching tune in again on tuesday and see what i have for you mm -hmm.